is 14 and the second to last topic on focus on thrombotic microangiopathies webinars for head professional. Uh, as you know, this program has been created by a collaboration between the ERN Euroblonet, so the European Reference Center on Rare Rheumatological Disease and the French National Center for Thrombotic Microangiopathies. And it consists of 15 sessions that are um, accredited by 11 continuing medical uh, education points um, given by the European Board for Accreditation in Hematology. So how do you get these credits? Um, the first criteria is to participate to the whole project, so the 15 session. So please write uh, your name and surname in the Zoom properly so we can track you. And also at the end of the session, you are going to receive a survey satisfaction, uh, like a questionnaire with three simple answer questions. So and <laughs> three simple answer. So please answer to it uh, because it's also a way for tracking your presence. And um, some other and final uh, home rules. So your micros are muted. Um, you will have the possibility at the end of the session to address questions to the uh, expert we have today. And you have uh, this time two possibilities. You can both unmute yourself and raise the question directly orally, or you can write, write the questions in the chat. Also, as you are noticing, this session is recorded. So if you don't feel comfortable with being registered, please put your camera off. So um, now we can have the um, lecture of today. So with me, there is the Professor Lorsing de Fontainebrun. Uh, who has a current position in the Department of Adult Hematology Bone Marrow Transplant at the IPHP Hospital Saint-Louis in France. And she's also a member of the National French Reference Center for Plastic Anemia, NPNH, and the French National Reference Center for Severe Neutro Neutropenia. So please, Professor Sincre de Pontecrine, the micro is to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mariangela. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm happy to uh, have this session to discuss about uh, TATMA. Um, so um, to uh, introduce uh, my topic first, uh, you have my conflict of interest in regard with this topic. Um, uh, that are that is uh, that are webinar rooms. Um, so we are going to talk about a diagnosis of TATMA, pathophysiology of TATMA that is uh, different from other uh, kind of TMA and uh, treatment and uh, prognosis. Um, I um, I don't know if uh, everybody is. Um, um, have a uh, hematopoietic stem cell uh, transplant um, activity, but as you know, uh, to perform a uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant, we have to um, make a conditioning regimen uh, that have, uh, um, according to the uh, context, um, uh, tumor um, effect. Uh, and uh, myeloablative effect and immunosuppressive effect. Uh, this is usually chemotherapy or uh, radiotherapy associated with um, uh, ATG or uh, CAMPAT uh, to have uh, important lymphodepletion. 
After transplant, a patient uh, received a, a treatment to prevent a graft versus host disease that is mostly based on uh, calcineurin inhibitor and sometimes in uh, with uh, mTOR uh, inhibitor. This is very important uh, to prevent GVHD. Uh, it is important to uh, have uh, in record that uh, GVHD, um, the first uh, target of GVHD is endothelial cells. And in the um, matter of TATMA, uh, these have uh, uh, a great importance. Uh, patient have, uh, after transplant, a, a period of aplasia um, that um, uh, that, that is uh, about uh, 20 days about. And during this uh, period, uh, and the uh, weeks after, uh, TATMA is usually observed when occurs. So uh, it's um, uh, almost difficult to diagnose uh, TMA in the setting of uh, um, other um, cytopenia, and this uh, led uh, the difficulty to uh, diagnose uh, TMA in the context of hematopoietic stem cell transplant, as uh, we are going to see. So um, that are the main um, complication we observed after um, uh, after hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And all uh, these complications uh, have um, impact on uh, the occurrence of um, TMA. Mm -hmm. um, the incidence of TMA, TMA is uh, very uh, variable in the different study. And um, as you uh, can see, it is about 10%. Uh, in most of uh, the series, but um, uh, in some, uh, it has been uh, described as often as uh, 75%. In post-mortem examination uh, studies, we can see TMA lesion in about 20% of the patients. Which, uh, uh, this is not clinical TMA, but we know that um, a lot of patients have a histological lesion of uh, TMA. Uh, and uh, um, these postmortem examination are restricted to patients uh, that have, have uh, experienced death. So it is um, um, not representative of all the patients, of course. Um, the um, large uh, uh, change in TATMA incidence between studies is mainly due to different uh, diagnostic criteria used in this series. A lot of uh, different uh, diagnostic criteria have been proposed, as you can see. Some are mostly based on biological uh, abnormality like histocyte, LDH, or thrombocytopenia or anemia. And we know that a lot of patients um, after transplant have uh, thrombocytopenia or anemia uh, that have other causes that TMA and that uh, LDH are um, uh, frequently increasing patients uh, after transplant. So those criteria are not very specific as well as kistocyte because a lot of patients after transplant could have uh, uh, some uh, fused kistocyte on um, the smear uh, without real TMA. So uh, the, um, some of these uh, 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 proposed uh, criteria have uh, included biological uh, organ injury markers that are more um, specific of TATMA. Um, 
and uh, this uh, could explain the large difference in uh, incidence observed between uh, uh, studies. In uh, this uh, study published in uh, 2010, you can see that according to the criteria used, the incidence will be very different. When you use largest criteria without organ injury marker, you have a higher incidence, usually a early diagnosis and the prognosis is better. When you have restrictive criteria, you select severe disease, patients that require specific treatment, and you have a severe prognosis. All of these differences make comparison difficult between these different studies, of course. We have uh, two recent large studies that have been published uh, that are uh, very interesting. The first, uh, CBMTR uh, study that include um, more than uh, 20,000 allo uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And um, in this study, they look for TATMA that have been declared by the physician that retrospectively. It's, um, seems as it um, uh, include a mostly fever form uh, that a physician have a uh, note. Uh, with this um, criteria, uh, the cumulative incidence in this study was 3%. That is very lower from the 10% that is usually uh, considered for THMA. But uh, as you can see, a uh, patient uh, with TATMA in this uh, study have a lower overall uh, survival um, that is uh, uh, due to uh, uh, increased mortality uh, in the uh, first uh, um, the first uh, three months post transplant mainly. This uh, second last study uh, that is uh, uh, a Japanese study uh, that concerns uh, 2,500 uh, uh, alloy hematopoietic stem cell transplant uh, was also based on uh, TTMA declared by physician, but uh, also by uh, file examinations. And in this uh, study, the incidence was uh, slightly uh, increased about 5%. And uh, as, you, as you can see, it is a representative of most of the study published. Uh, TATMA is an, is an early complication after transplant with the, most of the patient diagnosed before uh, day, uh, day, day 50 after transplant. And in this uh, second study, you can see that um, prognosis appear uh, very severe for patients with TATMA and uh, mortality is uh, very uh, early uh, after transplant. It is mainly due to uh, uh, non-relapse mortality and not to uh, relapse as uh, expected. We can um, observe two types of TATMA uh, in patient. Um, what we uh, called early TMA, and uh, that uh, the form I will uh, discuss after, uh, that represent uh, the largest part of TATMA, and that usually um, uh, occur uh, early before day uh, 100. There is a small part of patients that um, experience late TATMA. Uh, but usually it is a chronic form that is diagnosed on a kidney uh, biopsy without a biological classical uh, stigma of uh, TMA um, as uh, thrombocytopenia and uh, hemolytic anemia. Um, as um, as uh, I, I, I said early, uh, biological things of TATMA are very frequent, kyphosis, 
decrease aptoglobin, increase of LDH. Um, so uh, this is the uh, uh, most uh, frequent form of TATMA that is pure biological symptoms of TMA without uh, organ uh, injury. And uh, in most of cases, uh, when you have uh, only biological sim symptoms of TATMA and that you uh, decrease uh, cyclosporin, uh, most of the patient uh, will, will have um, uh, positive uh, evolution. Other uh, symptoms of uh, TATMA uh, that uh, indicates organ injury uh, are usually associated with a poor prognosis. The most frequent is kidney injury with uh, kidney failure and um, glomerul glomerular proteinuria that is very frequent. Severe uh, hypertension is also a uh, very uh, important symptom of uh, TATMA. And um, when we look uh, uh, at the patient that have biological signs of TMA, if they had uh, proteinuria and severe hypertension, uh, we are very uh, well careful with uh, the outcome of this patient uh, because they, are, uh, they have a high risk of severe organ injury. Other uh, organs uh, involved is um, uh, uh, um, uh, the brain with uh, frequent neurological uh, symptoms that are very uh, variable, confusion, focal deficiency, seizure, coma, and uh, typical press syndrome. When you look uh, to uh, MRI, the uh, MRI could be normal. Sometimes you have a lot of microinfarct or a classical press uh, lesion uh, description. Another uh, organ that is frequently uh, involved in uh, TATMA, not uh, classic in other form of TMA, are uh, serotis with frequent polyceritis that could be uh, very severe. Gastrointestinal involvement is also frequent uh, with bleeding uh, due to parietal hematoma when uh, you could perform endoscopy. And this could be difficult to uh, make differential diagnosis with uh, GVHD. Pulmonary involvement is uh, more rare, uh, but uh, sometimes observed as intraalveolar hemorrhage or pulmonary hypertension. The liver is uh, uh, sometimes to be considered to be uh, uh, involved, but it is very difficult to perform differential diagnosis with GVHD, viral infection, and stuff that could uh, be associated uh, in, in this patient, and sometimes uh, liver is uh, considered to be involved without uh, proof, as uh, you can imagine in our patient after transplant, uh, biopsy of uh, organs is always very difficult to perform due to uh, hemorrhagic uh, risk. What are uh, the risk factors uh, for uh, TATMA after transplant? Um, a lot of uh, study have been performed with sometimes very different conclusions. When we look to the largest and uh, the more frequent uh, risk factor uh, identified, um, you have uh, acute GVHD. Acute GVHD and risk factor for acute GVHD. In this uh, study, you can see that uh, both acute GVHD, steroid responsive acute GVHD are risk factor. CMV, uh, cytomegalovirus uh, reactivation is also associated with uh, high risk. In this study, um, diagnosis of lymphoma or myeloma was also associated with increased risk 
but um, it was it is very difficult to conclude as other uh, studies did, did not uh, find uh, this. In this study, you can see that incidence was about 10 percent and an unrelapsed mortality was at this patient. Another large study uh, recently uh, published um, was, um, I, I have uh, indicated the, the different risk factor, but uh, what was very interesting, the first is that you uh, find again acute GVHD and severe acute GVHD. Um, patients that have received a previous autologous hematuritive stem cell transplant, uh, you can um, consider that patients with a myeloma and lymphoma are uh, the most frequent patients uh, that are in this category. Another interesting risk, risk factor was the um, association of calcineurin inhibitor and uh, mTOR inhibitor that has been uh, uh, retrieved as a risk factor in other studies. Here you have the patient with passionate match uh, donor that is also a risk factor for uh, GVHD. Another interesting thing is that two uh, diseases uh, were associated with a high risk. It is uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and these patients usually have a conditioning regimen with TBI and um, aplastic anemia. This is a group of patients that have frequently received a long uh, treatment period with uh, calcineurin inhibitor before transplant, and this is associated with an increased risk of uh, THMA. About the pathophysiology of uh, THMA, uh, what we know, we know that uh, when a biopsy, a kidney biopsy is performed, lesions are uh, similar to what is observed in, um, uh, in, um, uh, in SSU or most uh, atypical SSU. But uh, you, you observe a thrombi, um, fibrin thrombi in the glomerule, mesangiolysis, and a thrombi in the arteriole and uh, interlobular artery. A lot of uh, biological uh, studies have been performed to identify um, a mechanism of uh, TATMA. Uh, and what we know is uh, it is a multifactorial mechanism that endothelial injury due to conditioning regime calcineurin inhibitor, acute GVHD, and viral infection is um, one of the uh, main uh, mechanisms, and this has been uh, uh, evaluated by measuring circulating endothelial cell, VHF level, and angiopoietin level. There is also an coagulation activation that is uh, a trigger and uh, a complement activation that have also a trigger uh, role. So uh, this uh, slide summarizes all the factors that are involved in, um, in uh, the uh, pathophysiology of uh, THMA. Um, in uh, in uh, 2013, uh, the uh, Cincinnati uh, group have uh, published uh, this, um, this uh, study. Uh, they observed that some patient uh, allergenic uh, recipient have a mismatch in some uh, complement factor uh, regulator um, alleles, and that uh, and they observe that after transplant, these patients have uh, anti CFH uh, antibodies, and they presume that uh, the uh, cause of uh, TATMA was an allogenic mechanism with allo antibodies, but. Um, 
this paper uh, have uh, read to a lot of uh, comments, uh, especially um, to uh, to um, discuss about the treatment and the possibility to use rituximab to uh, target uh, anti uh, CFH antibody um, and. Uh, that uh, THTMA was finally a, a marker of alloreactivity. But uh, this uh, publication was not followed by other publications about anti-factor uh, anti, uh, H antibodies or uh, about uh, rituximab therapy. So uh, we have a uh, look uh, uh, in a large cohort of 30 patients with severe TATMA at diagnosis, and we didn't identify uh, this uh, alloantibody. Uh, and uh, back to the first publication, there was no details about the teacher, and uh, they uh, didn't uh, identify mismatch uh, between donor and recipient in most of, uh, in, in some patients. So, um, this uh, mechanism of uh, TATMA was not uh, con confirmed by our other study. And as we will see, rituximab uh, was not uh, confirmed as uh, an efficient treatment for TATMA. The same uh, group have uh, published uh, after uh, another uh, important work on uh, THMA, uh, they identified uh, in this uh, uh, study in a large group of uh, children and younger adults that a patient with TMA have uh, uh, increased proteinuria and an elevation of uh, soluble uh, C5B9. And what they could observe is that uh, these two factors combined could identify patients with lower survival. And, um, and that, um, uh, that uh, this was correlated with uh, um, the especially uh, uh, soluble uh, C5B9 was correlated with uh, mortality. Uh, what is uh, specific in this study is that, uh, as you see, uh, patients are uh, children, mostly. Uh, the median age was under 10. The second uh, important uh, parameter is that most of these patients were not transplanted from malignancies. It is a very specific disease and it is not representative uh, to, uh, of, our, uh, of the patient we uh, usually transplant, as um, actually in France, uh, the part of patient uh, transplant for uh, non malignant disease is about 10%. Uh, and uh, in this uh, specific population, the uh, frequency of acute GVHD is uh, lower than we can see in our, uh, in our patients. The same group have uh, uh, studied uh, the uh, potential impact of some genetic uh, variant uh, uh, of um, unknown significant. Uh, in genes involved in uh, complement regulation and activation to uh, try to identify the genetic background to explain uh, THMA uh, in uh, some patients. Uh, as you can see in this uh, 77, uh, 77 patient that uh, went from the same cohort uh, I described before, uh, for whom they had uh, present transplant DNA. Uh, first, you can see that the incidence of TMA is very important because uh, uh, 34 patients 
uh, experienced TMA that is 44% uh, of the percent of the patient that is uh, very different for, from uh, what we've seen before, about 5% uh, of the patient in a classical cohort of patients. And um, what they observed uh, is that in the TATMA group, 65% um, had at least a, a VUS uh, versus 9% uh, in uh, the non-TATMA group. And um, they observed that uh, the patients that have more than three births was only non caucasian patients and have had a high mortality that we can uh, observe in uh, this um, in this slide. So uh, we don't know. Uh, we, we know that uh, the, the the genetic variants they observed were not. Uh, known um, pathogenic variant. It was only the, so um, the, uh, uh, the the possibility to uh, conclude uh, that uh, uh, this was uh, the uh, uh, real uh, uh, causes of uh, the increased um, um, incidence of TTMA and of mortality is uh, discutable. Um, to uh, to uh, now discuss about TTMA treatment, actually, uh, we can say that there is no consensus about TTMA treatment. We know uh, that symptomatic treatment. Um, uh, is uh, very important, especially to control hypertension, to um, give a platelet and red blood cell infusion. Uh, it's different from other uh, TMA uh, in, uh, in which you avoid it. In our patients, there is no uh, increased risk to uh, perform uh, platelet or red blood cell infusion and um, to uh, avoid uh, 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 toxicity, uh, especially kidney toxicity. Uh, the management of immunosuppressive therapy is uh, always a, a, a matter of debate, uh, as we have to, re to uh, perform a reduction or wide draw of immunosuppressive therapy, uh, especially because of uh, risk of acute GVHD in case of uh, calcitonin inhibitor or mTOR inhibitor uh, stop. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, we have no prospective nor retrospective study that could uh, uh, give us a um, response. Most of uh, uh, the physician uh, um, uh, Reduce uh, um, the pathology of uh, immunosuppressive therapy in case of uh, non severe TMA and uh, stop it in case of uh, severe TMA with uh, organ injury. Another treatment that has been uh, used for a long time are uh, plasma exchange. But we know uh, uh, from a, a, a large number of theories that uh, it is associated with a risk of vascular and infectious complications, and uh, that the response uh, to, um, to this treatment is um, uh, usually uh, 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 not uh, uh, not very um, uh, conclusive, and overall survival is always uh, poor, excepted uh, in this small uh, theory, it was a prospective theory, and um, patients uh, were uh, very uh, early in, uh, the, uh, in, the, in the disease. Uh, 
So uh, uh, today uh, we uh, don't uh, propose plasma action in this uh, patient. Uh, here um, you uh, can see uh, in the recent study uh, from Ipela that a patient uh, that uh, had received plasma pheresis had a higher risk of uh, death than a patient uh, the, uh, that did not. Um, in uh, 2015, we um, uh, report uh, a first uh, series of uh, patients treated uh, with uh, rituximab uh, as uh, we, uh, we have seen before, a uh, complement uh, like in um, SHU is um, known to have an important role, um, maybe as a trigger or as a loop, amplification loop in uh, TATMA. And um, this, uh, this uh, mechanism uh, lead us to uh, use first in the first patient uh, that have a positive uh, evolution uh, while he had a severe TATMA. And then in uh, this uh, small uh, cohort of uh, 12 patients that had um, that were all uh, transplant and uh, that have severe TATMA that um, were refractory to other kind of treatment, calcineurin or mTOR inhibitor withdrawal, plasma exchange, rituximab in some and steroids in some. Most have a, a fever organ injury and uh, three uh, need hemodialysis. Um, these patients uh, were um, treated uh, uh, after a median of uh, seven, uh, uh, a median of um, um, uh, 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 70 days about uh, because they received all the treatment uh, before. And what we see in this uh, first series is that uh, overall uh, survival uh, was uh, about uh, 33 percent, while a response was about uh, 50 uh, percent. Some patients um, uh, that uh, survived had a severe uh, kidney uh, injury uh, and did not um, did not. Uh, uh, improve after uh, the treatment. This was the first, uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, I cannot, I lost, uh, I'm sorry, I lost, uh, tech, tech, tech. I lost the, the, the button. Um, a, a lot of uh, other small retrospective studies have been uh, published from uh, this date. Uh, and um, I will focus on the last uh, study uh, that has been published by uh, the Cincinnati group uh, in uh, 2020. They uh, report uh, six, six, 64 patients from a, a large prospective uh, stem cell cohort. Um, these patients had um, uh, were young patients as uh, usual, usual, as observed previously uh, in this uh, in this uh, center, and uh, were uh, mostly uh, transplant for uh, non-malignant uh, disease. In this uh, cohort of 64 patients, uh, most have um, uh, multiple organ failure due to TATMA and um, the uh, uh, complete remission um, level was about uh, 56% with uh, a third of patients 
uh, that were uh, non responsive. In this uh, study, they identified um, uh, as previously observed the uh, level of um, uh, soluble C5 BNF as an important factor, but uh, also um, uh, the uh, gastrointestinal involvement as uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, fever um, evolution and uh, survival. Uh, an important, uh, another important point is that uh, in uh, this specific group of patients uh, that is uh, allergenic stem cell transplant, it is uh, very important uh, to uh, monitor the efficacy of uh, complement uh, inhibition. And um, it is recommended to uh, follow the inhibition by the CH50 test to uh, adapt the uh, dosage of eculizumab to, um, uh, to be sure that uh, complement uh, uh, is uh, fully blocked to um, uh, give the uh, better uh, chance to uh, control uh, the, uh, the, the, the TATMA. So um, all the treatments that have been uh, discussed for uh, TATMA are uh, rituximab, as uh, I have uh, already uh, uh, discussed uh, before. Here you have two small study in a few patients uh, that report efficacy of rituximab, but uh, no large study uh, to confirm it. And uh, defibrotid uh, has been uh, suggested to have uh, a favorable impact on TATMA uh, evolution. However, there is no um, important data uh, to date, uh, to my knowledge, to confirm it. And uh, it is uh, expected that uh, endothelial cells um, that are uh, the main um, not target, but um, point of uh, uh, central, a central in this disease could be uh, efficiently uh, uh, target. So um, to uh, conclude, uh, we can uh, say that TATMA is a, a rare disease uh, in patient, uh, uh, in transplant patient, that the real incidence is uh, probably uh, five percent but uh, that patient uh, that had uh, organ injury uh, associated with TMA have a very uh, severe prognosis. Today, uh, calcinurin inhibitor, stapening or ridoring and supportive care are the first line uh, treatments. And in the absence of um, improvement, uh, Eculizumab uh, is the uh, second line uh, for this disease. However, there is uh, to date no randomized, randomized trial published uh, to uh, confirm the, um, the uh, real uh, efficacy of this treatment. There are actually some trials uh, that are ongoing uh, with um, complement uh, inhibitors, um, different kind of complement inhibitors that could uh, help us. Um, we know that uncontrolled acute GHD or uncontrolled infection 
uh, is really associated with refractory uh, TATMA. And um, long-term uh, organ failure uh, will remain uh, frequent in uh, survivor, uh, uh, unfortunately. Actually, uh, we need a large prospective multicentric studies to uh, evaluate uh, the efficacy of uh, eculizumab or other complement uh, inhibitor uh, in this disease. And uh, if possible, randomized trial. But we know that uh, when a uh, complication is infrequent, uh, is rare, it is very difficult, uh, difficult to uh, perform this kind of trial. And um, that's all. Um, <laughs> I hope uh, it was um, clear. Thank you very much. It was indeed very clear and comprehensive. So um, let's see if the audience have some questions to address in you. Um, so I will give everyone the possibility to unmute their micro if they prefer to talk instead of um, writing, but both ways are great if you want to write or to talk. So in the while, uh, we receive a comment in the in the chat thank you very much for a very interesting presentation unfortunately i have to leave but it was indeed a very good presentation i echoed the same comment